Tonight we are making our homemade spam. A couple videos back in the fall, we butchered our pigs and we said that we were going to try out some of our own homemade spam. So tonight is the day that we decided to do that. So we ground up, um, you know, we, we ground up a whole bunch of, of the pork. And then, um, so we're going to start with 10 pounds of ground up ham, 10 pounds of ground pork shoulder, and 5 pounds of ground bacon. And we mix all that ground meat together. And in the bowl, we have it in 5 pound increments. So we've already made 5 loaves of this homemade Spam today. So this is nearing the end of it. And so this is um, another 5 pounds of the ground up meat, all 3 parts mixed together. So now, in for the seasoning that we're gonna add to here is a recipe that my husband kind of made up and it really tasted good because we tasted the first loaf this morning, you know, to make sure that we liked it and to do it with the other ones. And it was excellent. The kids ate it up, we ate it up, the whole plate was empty. So these are good, this is a good seasoning. So we hope that you can try it and that you'll like it. But of course, for homemade spam, there's a lot of different recipes and seasonings that you can use to your liking. So, for this recipe though, we're going to use one and a half tablespoons of curing salt. We're going to use one and a half tablespoons of garlic powder. One and a half tablespoons of paprika. And now the paprika gives it a really good taste. It doesn't make it hot or spicy like you would think. Um, it just gives it a really good flavor for the Spam. But like I said, you can always use different seasonings if you want, or you could omit the paprika and just use the other ones, so. Kind of hard coming out there, but we're almost there, okay. And then a, one and a half tablespoons of onion powder as well. This is the onion powder. Okay. And then we're going to use a couple tablespoons of kosher salt right here. And now to bind it, the meat together so it doesn't st stay with the ground meat consistency, you want it to be smashed together and kept together, held together, we're going to use cornstarch. So we're going to use three to four tablespoons of cornstarch. Okay. And this mixture that we're making is called a slurry. Um, I just learned that today. My husband told me about that what it's called and so we're also going to need a quarter cup of water that's going to make it right here you need to use really ice cold water quarter of a cup mix it okay so we're going to mix it all together now with the ice cold water and it's going to make it the cornstarch is again it's going to make it thick and it's going to bind all of that all of the meat together like a um like spam. So just gonna mix it really good together here. Get all the lumps out as best you can. Scrape it off on the sides. And this is really this really worked out well for us. So it's not too difficult. This is our first time, like I said earlier, making our own spam and it really paid off well. It really was delicious. It does take a little time though, that's for all the steps, and which you'll see in a minute for the end of it. Okay, so that looks pretty well. See how it's pretty smooth, not many lumps. So now we're going to mix it. We're going to use our hands to mix it into the meat so that way all the meat gets coated so the flavoring is pretty e even in the spam. Now 
we're going to mix it together. And like I said, we just use our hands because we want to get it all equally flavored. to put this in to make this pan. Oh, these are so, cool too. five by nine inch loaf pan. This is what we've been using. We have three of them, so we've just been doing them in batches all day. Well, you know. So we're gonna just put the meat in here and you just pack it down as tight as you can, covering all the surface of the pan. You wanna not cut, you, want, you don't wanna fill this up all the way. You wanna leave about an inch from the top, but just keep pushing it down to the corners and everything, like so. Okay, so this is just about good. I'm just gonna keep pushing it down. Make it as even as you can. And now what we're going to do next is we're going to double wrap it in aluminum foil. Two times in aluminum foil. I'm just going to go wash my hands and I'll be right back to show you it wrapped. Okay, so now I'm back with the aluminum foil. Like I said, we're going to double wrap the top of it. Like so. around the edges and I'm going to get one more piece for a while to start but now what you have to do it in like a double kind of like a double broiler but it's a double baker is what we're going to call it so over here we have this bigger pan that you're going to fill halfway full with water ah, about halfway full and now then our pan this rectangle pan can fit two loaf pans in it at a time so we set it in here and here was already one here we have filled with spam as well so the two of them can fit in here. So depending on how big of a pan you have will depend on how many loaf pans you can fit in there. And this right here is another thing of spam right here that we have we will do on the next batch because three of them can't fit in here. So now we're going to put this rectangle thing in the oven at 250 degrees for three and a half hours. And once it bakes for three and a half hours, then you're going to take this out just like this. Keep it just like this. Just take it out of the oven. Set it to the side on top of their counter. Let it cool. Okay, so let this cool, but don't don't uncover it. Just let it cool. Then after it cools, you're going to take a normal sized brick like this we have, and you're going to, I'm not going to really do it. I'm just going to show you because these are not baked yet, but then you're going to take them out. You're going to take these pans out of the water pan, okay, and then you're going to place one brick per loaf pan on top of this. So you want this to, to press weight onto that meat. And then you're going to put it in the refrigerator like that with the brick on it for 16 hours. So it needs to compress that meat, press it down, press it down, press it down. You need that weight to, con to make that spam texture. So it's not just ground meat, loose ground meat, okay? So you're gonna do that. You're going to do that for 16 hours in the refrigerator. And when it is done, you're going to take it out of the refrigerator 
and you're gonna take it out of your pan and this is what you're gonna get. This is what it looks like. So you see that gelatin, that is, that is a good sign. You want that gelatin around that meat. Um, so don't be worried if you see this. This is what you want. This is what it should look like, okay? Now at this point, you can slice it up and cook it and eat it. You can, or however you wanna eat it. What we do and what we have been doing today is we've been slicing it, so I'll show you. And you can slice it as thick as you want. We like just a medium. We just like a medium um, thickness. So as you can see, there is a piece of it like that. And so we've been slicing it and then we've been actually wrapping um, about eight to 10 pieces per package. And then we've been freezing it for later use, of course. Cause like I said, we have been cooking I mean, we've been making, in the end, we'll probably have almost 10 loaves that we have made for our family. So we can't eat it all at once, of course. So to keep it to keep it safe and keep it fresh for us to eat later, we are freezing it. And here is the packet of some that we've frozen. So like I said, it's already pre-sliced. So now all I have to do is take it out of the freezer and just cook it on the stove top. And that's what we did this morning with our first loaf, and it was delicious. We just put it on a, on a cast iron pan cooked it either side, both sides brown it. I mean, you know, make sure it's kind of like sausage, you know, and um, just bake it or I mean, cook it on the top, fry it if you want. And um, it was really delicious. So we hope that you try this recipe and leave in the comments if you liked it or if you didn't. And we would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Bye.